Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for another day with you. And we know that you will open the heavens and descend in your Shekinah to bless the people of God, your people. And may I speak like the pen of a ready writer. So, Father, may I be your oracle at this time. So it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. And we give you thanks for a great opportunity to be with you again. Saints of God, I have a very interesting topic. And this topic, I want it to provoke theological discussions in the minds and between scholar, Bible scholars, between, uh, in, in the minds of the people of God. Because it is essential in our Christian journey that we understand a few things and not take things for granted. It's also important for us to be observant about the things we go through in life. We should also be observant about the things attached and connected to our lineages, the things that occur repeatedly in the lives of people that belong to our families. And we also check if we are manifesting some of those things. Whatever in the Christian journey, there are valleys and there are mountains. But, the, but our God is the God that's able, the God of Zerubbabel, that's able to break down the mountains and the hills. And so, as I share some of these cosmic mysteries, may the God of the galaxies give us understanding, sight, and insight into the things that I'm going to share today. The things I'm going to share, however, may make somebody afraid may make what a few people afraid but it shouldn't because uh, we're basing our scriptures on the book of isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 and i read very briefly the yoke will be destroyed because you have grown so fat the yoke will be destroyed by the reason of the anointing and another translation of Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27 says that the Lord shall end the bondage of his people. So we stand on the integrity of his word to, to know that for sure he's our blessed assurance that we shall be completely delivered from the things I'm going to share right now. So the title of my message is Do Not Accept Captivity. So what is captivity? In a nutshell, because of time, I, I want to give you a biblical example of what captivity is, a tip of the iceberg, and that's the Babylonian captivity, when the children of Israel were in bondage. The Bible says that they, were, they became fetchers of water and hewers of wood. They became the, labor, the laborers where they were uh, held in captivity. So that tells us, and uh, they suffered, they came under great burden. They were slaves. So captivity is a kind of vassalage. Captivity is slavery. You are a slave to the, whoever ha has you in captivity. You are a slave to your captor. And the plethora of uh, physical and spiritual uh, 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 things that I will share to sh give you insight into captivity. Uh, Suffering through the spiritual realm is so important because it gives you the broader dimensions of captivity. And as I go on sharing this, I want to encourage us that just as the Lord opened the eyes of Ezekiel in the book of Ezekiel, and the Bible says that Ezekiel saw the visions of God, may the Lord open the, our eyes to see his visions and to see the intricate uh, uh, details that he's going to unfold tonight, which means it's essential that we as people of God have the spirit of discernment and not take things into, and not just take things for granted. The Babylonian captivity was, a, was man's inhumanity to man. That tells us that captivity is a, is a very restrictive and toxic experience. You are strapped virtually to the loin or whoever has you in captivity. But let's be assured about the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 11, that says that with justice, the Lord will wage the war. So he is the God, the warrior that lives in heaven, that will fight all our battles. 
And even if they were uh, uh, ancient things, ancient shrines, things that predate our existence that we never knew about, uh, uh, we will invoke the God of Gideon, who told Gideon, tear down your, your father's altars. So wherever the, those altars are, the God of the galaxies understands where they are, where they were laid by our, uh, by our forefathers, by our forebears. He knows where those altars are. And these are things that predate our existence. So, and they are not things that human eyes that can see. So these are part of the cosmic mysteries that are embedded in the, in the horizon. But it's good as people of God, we should understand some of these things. When you, someone is in captivity, some of the time, the victim of captivity is totally unaware, especially when it is spiritual. But the, the physical captivity is when you see people thrown into uh, jails, you know, Kirikiri prison, whatever prison, and they are handcuffed, they are maybe on leg cuffs. So those are the physical uh, captivities that we may see. But what about the spiritual? Because uh, saints of God, the spiritual con controls the physical. So sometimes we are also in captivity with leg cuffs and, uh, and uh, handcuffs, spiritual. And it takes the God of Ezekiel to open your eyes to be able to see those, those, uh, th those pegs that are holding you down. And you may now come under a barrage of human situations, situations you do not understand. And some of those situations really are not your fault. Because if these are things that predate our existence, these may also have been things that our uh, forefathers, you know, uh, contributed to, knowingly and unknowingly. And so we must uh, understand some of these things, that even the things we go through in our Christian lives, some of them may have their roots, actually, right from the very foundations. But we should not bother because the blood of Jesus that we are invoking even at this time can go to those very foundations and silence, yes, whatever voices of iniquity that were committed by our parents or forefathers or even committed by us. And the blood of Jesus can also go to the very foundations to silence the voices of vengeance. Vengeance, yes, because some of our forefathers who went into cannibalism and also shed blood, the, the, blood, the, the, the blood cries to, to the heavens for vengeance. And for the blood of Jesus, especially when we are in Christ, will go and silence those voices of vengeance and the voices of iniquity. So we, we, have, so we, we are rest assured that uh, even in captivity, our God is very close by. And as we cry unto him, he will not only open our eyes, but he will come with speed, according to Revelation chapter 19, that says that he wages war, which means he delivers us from all human situations. And um, sometimes it will be uh, uh, different forms of cap spiritual captivity. It, it, uh, it could be poverty. And you look at your lineage. Nobody has ever bought a car in your family. Nobody. Nobody is married. Everybody is divorced. And sometimes these captivities can be territorial, spreading across nations and human communities, geographical spaces. These are, they are, they are territorial principalities or territorial rulers that control some of these jurisdictions. But it requires the spirit of law to open your eyes. And the Lord, anyway, is always uh, ready. It's always ready to deliver us from these afflictions, especially when we are in the know. He, so that's uh, the good news. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter